Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So uh, we've been doing a lot more live streaming and gaming on this channel. We're gonna get more into that as time goes on. And so recently I actually ended up picking up a Stream Deck XL. Now these things aren't new, they've been out for quite some time, but I did want to do a quick review on one, show you guys or share with you guys my thoughts and my experience with it and answer the question if these things are still worth it in 2022. So with that being said, let's jump right in. Now the first thing that I'd like to look at with a new product is of course the build quality of this thing. If it's cheap, you're probably not gonna have a good time. Stream Deck XL is no exception. It's got a really nice build quality to it. It's got some nice weight to it. The design of it is very minimal, but functions quite well. Uh, this thing is quite large at about seven inches wide, four and a half inches deep, and about an inch and a half tall without the base attached. If you do attach the base, uh, you're looking at about four inches tall and everything else remains the same. On the bottom, you will find four rubber pads in order to prevent the unit from sliding around and a slot to run the USB 3.0 Type-C cable. You guys need to remember that this is a uh, basically a screen. There's going to be a lot going on, so having that extra bandwidth ensures of smooth playback. Now, the USB 3.0 cable is also uh, really nice. It's quite long. It's braided, so you don't have to worry about it tangling or getting any type of knots in it. If the Stream Deck does sit just a little too low for you, you can attach the base via the magnets. They do have a nice force to them that keeps them together. You don't have to worry about them popping off when you're sliding the unit around, moving it, or even just pressing any of the buttons. They remain connected. On the base, you'll find another slot on the back in order to feed that USB 3.0 cable through and a large anti-slip rubber footing on basically the entire bottom of that base. The buttons are bright and vivid and viewable from virtually any angle. They do feel solid when pressed and have almost a thunk-like response. And speaking of the buttons, the amount of customizations that you can do within the software is absolutely insane. If you want to keep it simple, just install the software, start dragging actions over to the screen from their default library, which already includes things like Streamlabs OBS, OBS Studio, and Twitch Studio, and more. You can also create pages, new profiles that you can load upon an EXE detection, and of course, right-clicking a square provides a create folder option where you can organize things into folders. Getting more advanced is also extremely easy to do. All you need to do is once again, head into the software, click on the Stream Deck store, and from here you can browse tons of different options to download plugins, more icon sets, sound effects, and you can even have integrations like Philips Hue Control, monitor your battery life or your peripherals, and even speed test your internet. Search what you're looking for, click the download button, and begin adding those commands to your buttons. Once a button has been assigned, you can double click it to change its purpose, its configurations, its titles, and assign a couple of different icon images. Now at this point, before I even made the decision to buy my own Stream Deck, I wasn't really sure of the hype surrounding these things and everybody that I talked to said they absolutely loved it. And after using one for a few months, I can certainly see where the hype is coming from. These things are really nice to have. They're easy to set up, they're fun to play around with, and you can organize basically everything and have it at the touch of a button. Now the cool thing about the Stream Deck is it's not necessarily just designed for streaming anymore. You can use it for virtual everything, including those things, but also including things like uh, smart home automation. You can have it set up to be a virtual button box for games like American Truck Simulator or Farm uh, Sim 22. Speaking of which, I actually have an icon pack that I'm going to be doing a review on from Icon City that'll be coming out this upcoming Saturday, so stay tuned for that. But if you can virtually set this thing up to do anything that you want. Uh, just before this video, I was actually messing around with it, trying to do some IFTTT stuff in order to control some of my Philips Hue or my Philips Smart Home type stuff at the touch of a button. So it's really nice to have. So we've talked a lot about all of the cool things that you can do with the Stream Deck, but let's look at some of the downsides. First off, this one isn't necessarily a deal breaker, but I would like to see them incorporate some type of mounting bracket where you can attach this to some type of professional equipment, making things a little bit easier to uh, set up on your station. Now the other thing, and I think the biggest one is going to be cost. At the time of this video, the 32 key system is gonna run you about 250 US dollars. And if you're a light streamer or like the occasional streamer and a light user, then having a 32 key system is going to be overkill. But then again, if you're looking at the six key system, which runs about 80 US dollars, you're gonna end up filling that up pretty quickly. And so what I would say is if you're going to look at getting one, then I would highly recommend the 15 key system. 
Those run about 150 US dollars again at the time of this video, but I think that's gonna give you a nice in-between of cost to performance ratio. So just a few final thoughts to wrap up this review is as you've probably determined, I've really enjoyed my stream deck and tailored it to what I'm looking for. Um, but that's ultimately gonna be determined up to you guys whether or not one of these is worth it. They are expensive, but I think a lot of that is offset just the, by the amount of convenience and integration that comes along with them now. So in 2022, is one of these still worth it? At least for me, I would definitely say yes. Now more than ever, with the amount of plugins and amount of integrations and developments that are continuing to go on, you can tailor one of these things to anything that you want it to do, basically. So I definitely think that offsets the cost. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys have one, if you're looking for one, reach out to me down in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think of this review. If you liked it, you hated it, whatever. Uh, of course, give it a like. Thumbs up, share, subscribe, do all those YouTube things that we do. Those things certainly help us grow our channel and is certainly appreciated. But that is going to wrap it up. I will have the product links down below for you guys to check out any of the tech specs if you're still looking for one. Uh, and then of course, head on over to our merch store over at shop.helpcloud.com. We've got a lot of cool merch over there that you can check out, including a hat just like this one. So other than that, thanks again for you guys' support. Thanks again for watching and we will see you on the next one. Peace.